Yeah, I, in the book I do call it a frazzled customer syndrome because I think that best described what I was seeing out there. Uh, the reality of it is when we are under pressure to do more, to do it faster, to, um, you know, with fewer resources, we become different people. We're not rational and sane decision makers. And I think all of our sales methodology that's out there right now today assumes that this this normal human being that has all the time to analyze and study the data and make rational decisions is just sitting at the desk waiting for us to contact them as salespeople. But the reality of it is when you are crazy busy, you Time is your most precious commodity, and so you protect it at all costs, which means, by the way, that when salespeople are trying to reach you, the decision maker, I'm asking everybody to sit in the role of decision maker right now, when people want your time, when when you're crazy busy, you sit with your finger on the delete button when they call you. (laughs) That's true, though, isn't it? <laughs> yes, that's why I'm laughing. It is true. Yes. Okay. So, so you, the decision maker, when you're in the, when you're in the role of the buyer, you sit with your finger on the the delete button for the phone messages and the delete button for your email messages. And research shows, by the way, that the average person is taking 2.7 seconds to make a decision on an email message. Wow. Before they delete it decide to continue reading it further or forward it to somebody else. 2.7 seconds is like this little nanosecond that you've got to capture somebody's attention. That's, and the that's same reading, thing holds true. That's reading, the subject, that's reading the subject line, 2.7 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's pretty bad, isn't it? Tells you the importance of the subject line, though, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yes, it does. <laughs> I know. So what are some, some strategies that you found to help you work through this kind of fray? Well, it it starts, I mean, in the book I talk about the three primary decisions that a customer makes. And the first decision they make is to allow you access. And and they make it in these small and tiny increments. And I'll I'll go back and give some specific examples there. But the second decision they make is to change from the status quo, which, by the way, is the hardest decision for them to make because – any change requires more time. It means they have to stop and look and analyze what they're doing. They have to you know, determine if it's going to make a, a, a difference for the organization. They're, they have to look at how to get buy-in to change and everything that's affected. So it's a massive step for them. And then the third decision they make is which vendor or supplier to use. What I typically see people do is, is to make some real sales derailing mistakes and we you know you talked about you like speed up sales well mostly what i see people doing is delaying and and derailing sales at the very front end and they do this by by uh, using the gracious message or the nice approach and they don't want to be seen as product pushing peddlers or self-serving salespeople. they really want to you know, show that they're consultative and nice and willing to work with people. And so they leave this message that goes something like this. You know, hi, Stone, this is Jill Conrath Klein. I'm the account executive with LeapFrog Strategies. We specialize in offering a full range of training programs for all your sales needs, all the way from opening doors to closing sales. I would love to come and talk with you about how you're currently handling your needs in the sales training area and to share with you some of the things my company can do. I'd be glad to meet with you at your earliest convenience. And here's my number. Isn't that what, what you hear most of the time? Yes, hear and see all the time. You lost me after yeah. 2.7 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a throwaway message that they're using thinking they sound nice, but it doesn't meet the criteria that the customer is using to evaluate it if it's worth his or her time. If you look at what's going on in people's minds and they're evaluating salespeople every single interaction, the first thing they're saying when you call or send an email is, is this aligned with my business direction? Is this something that I'm evaluated on? And if it's, if you call because you want to talk about their printing needs, they're not evaluated on printing needs. They're evaluated on, you know, reducing overall costs or improving operational efficiency or getting maximum return for their marketing spend. And so you have to start using the words that they're evaluated on in your messaging. And that's not being mean. It's just being professional. And so that's the first thing that they ask. The second thing they said is they'll ask themselves, is this a priority right now? You know, is it urgent that I take action? And in many cases, because they are so frazzled, even if they you are aligned with what they need. If it's not a priority right now, they may delete you just because they don't have the bandwidth to handle one more thing. 
Uh, obviously, the timing is good now. Economy's tough. You know, all of us that are out there selling and trying to put food on the table by uh, by uh, by selling, uh, we need the guidance. We need the help. But the economy's going to come back. We we know it will. When it turns around, does this have equal merit, or is this really more a, a book for these times? This is is uh, certainly a book right now for when the economy is tough because people are charted to do too much and people have you know organizations have laid off people and they're running lean and mean, but it's not just a book for these lean and mean times because it's fundamentally there's a fundamental shift in how buyers are reacting. Corporations are not going to staff up so that people have the luxury of you know working a forty hour week and getting it all done at the end of 40 hours. I mean, the average person right now has 59 hours work sitting on his or her desk right now that isn't done, and more just keeps being added to it. But what's, what's happened is buyers have changed how they react to sellers, and that's not going to go back. That is not going to go away. They are, you are either going to be a seller who brings value, or you're going to be a dinosaur. And there, and there literally is no room in between. You know, if if you don't add value and if you don't bring them ideas and insights, if you don't provoke their thinking, um, and if you don't show them how they can run their business better, they don't need to work with you. I mean, they can go online, and they will go online to research their problem, to look for solutions, to check everything out. They don't need a seller who just simply wants to talk with them about the product. That's a waste of their time, and they will not let that go. So this is a change that is permanent. We will always need to be focus on you know, keeping things simple, um, being aligned with their, their objectives, being an invaluable resource right now. Those are just things that will carry forward and will not go away when the, the economy comes back. Can you contrast the example that you shared with us earlier that was uh, maybe a little too much oh. sugar for a dime, as we say down my way, uh, with a more productive, more, uh, more practical uh, approach? Sure. I'll, I'll take that same example and I'll and I'll make it snappy, okay? <laughs> okay. So that, that it hits on all four points that I talked about. I would call you up and I would say, Stone, Jill Conrad calling. Say, I noticed in reading the recent business journal that one of your company's prime objectives in this coming year is to go up market with your sales force. I understand that's a real challenge when you're using techno, techno, bleh, I can't talk, technology-driven people to do this. I have some ideas that can help you shorten time to revenue and get up to speed faster. Let's set up a time to talk. Wow, that that dramatic. what a contrast! That is dramatic contrast. An audience dramatic just, contrast. I yeah. Just want to remind the audience again that that nine nine tips to get prospects to call you back. That that's that that she walks you through how to create that. So you can create it for your own business. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh right. wow, that's true. But you can see how different it is, and and it, it's short. It's to the point. It's about their business objective. I sound like a peer. I've got some ideas. You know, I'm not hoping I can get on their schedule. I, I've got meat right now, then they know that I'm a strong person, can bring value. 